So, Mr. Anup, last time we spoke, you had uh, written this beautiful book uh, on El Fad, you know, Dialogues with the Wind. And uh, this time, uh, as we are speaking, we are quite close to his third death anniversary. And uh, yes. you are ready. You are ready with the release of the Song of the Scorpions. Uh, so, would you say the release is uh, kind of a tribute to him? It is a, absolutely a tribute to Irfan. It's a, our homage, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we are, of course, tremendously in grief that uh, he's not here with us and that, uh, you know, that we have to then make this film into a tribute to him. Mm -hmm. Whereas what we would have, you know, really loved is to share this occasion with him. You know, he wanted so much uh, for the film to be released uh, in India, and he was very impatient for it uh, to be seen. It was a film that he was very proud of, and uh, you know, uh, it really, really saddens me that it took so long to bring it to India. Yeah, so it's it's a two, uh, 2017 film. Am I correct? You are very right. Yeah. So what has taken this long for it to be released in India? I mean, what were the hurdles on the way? Well, the hurdles are usual for this kind of a film, I think, <laughs> in India. <laughs> um, as, you, as you know, you know, the film was premiered at the Locarno Film Festival in uh, 2017. Uh, and then for about a year, it traveled to almost all the major film festivals in the world, winning numerous awards. For Irfan, for Gul Shifte, um, Best Film Awards, you know, all kinds of things. It also won awards for uh, the best music in Italy. Uh, so in 2019, the, the film was released in Europe. And we were all, you know, very, very happy because the film had done well at the festivals. And now the European release uh, had gone well also. So we thought we had a great chance of releasing the film in India. However, when we showed it to showed the film to distributors in India, uh, while I think everyone uh, had good things to say about the film, they felt that uh, the Indian audience was simply not ready for such a film. You know, And uh, while I was very, very disappointed by that answer, it did not surprise me because I'd heard them say that uh, before uh, of my earlier film also. You know. Including the sub? I Indeed. said it's yes. <laughs> yes, yes. So, uh, you know, we decided to wait patiently. Uh, but that was not easy because in 2019, Irfan was diagnosed with uh, cancer. And uh, then it made it more and more difficult for us to tell him every time that we spoke that, uh, you know, we had still not found uh, a release in India. And I could hear the really terrible disappointment in his voice when I would tell him that. Then in uh, about two, 2020, I think uh, just a week before he passed away, week or two before he passed away, uh, we heard from... Uh, uh, Kumar Mangat of uh, Panorama Studios and uh, uh, Shiv Sharma of uh, 70mm Talkies um, telling us that they are committed to releasing the film in India. And the way they spoke about the film, the way they spoke about their love for Irfan, we knew that we had finally found the right distributors. Unfortunately, Irfan then passed away mm -hmm. and it took us a while, but in 2021, uh, we thought we could finally release the film. And we were all ready, you know, it had been announced, all the cinemas had been booked. Uh, uh, but a week before the release, we were hit by COVID. So we had to postpone the screening again. Um, uh, to postpone the release again. And uh, now that the cinemas are open again, uh, people are returning to cinema. And this is the third death anniversary of Irfan's. Uh, 
we felt really that we should do our best to release the film now. So thanks to the distributors of the film who have worked very hard, have been you know, immensely supportive to us. And I cannot be more grateful that they uh, are taking all their strength to release this film finally on uh, April the 28th, a day before Irfan's uh, death anniversary. And the film now comes for him as a tribute, as a homage. Uh, but of course, apart from the you know yeah, abiding interest in Irfan and his work, do you think after such a long period, uh, the film some, somehow loses its steam or people lose interest in that film? Uh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I really think that um, uh, that the way that we have made the film and uh, uh, the story of the film, uh, Irfan, of course, you know, mm -hmm. and this wonderful, wonderful actress, uh, Gulshifte Farhani. I think yeah, all yeah. of all those elements will entrance uh, the Indian audience and. Uh, uh, and I hope they will come and see Irfan the way he deserves to be seen. Mm. This great actor, he deserves to be seen on the big screen. You know, yeah. he does not deserve to be seen on a laptop or, uh, you know, a small television set. This is a great actor we love very much. This is probably going to be the last uh, time that we see a new performance of his. You know, I really hope that the audience will come and see him as he should be seen on the big screen. But what shade of Irfan are we going to see in this particular movie after having seen him in a wide ranging roles in almost every conceivable shade there is to an actor? Well, you know, what I love about uh, Irfan's uh, performances is that he never fits any generic uh, character. You know, he might play something comic, he might play something tragic, he might play something dark, but there is always something else that emerges also, you know, in uh, his performances. And I think that is exactly what we love about Irfan, that he teaches us again and again that human beings are not, you know, uh, simple things to be put in a box, that uh, always... You know, somewhere we will seep out of the box. Something of us will leak out, you know, which uh, you can never uh, define. And he is an actor really without any definition. He always surprises us. So in this film, in many ways, you know, he plays uh, quite a dark character. And yet you see that the quality of life, the quality of joy, the quality of passion, of uh, ishq, you know, of love that he brings is, uh, is uh, you know, something that you would expect in a, in a love story. All right. And not in a tragedy, so to speak. So he changes our definition, really. Uh, one of the very few actors of our, our time who changes the definition of just what it is to act. You know. Yeah, but but uh, he's an actor of immense possibilities. Uh, but tell me how difficult or easy was it? To, is it to direct an actor who is like who's a revelation in almost every gesture, every expression? It's a joy. It's it, it, it's a complete joy, you know, because when Irfan comes to you, he really does not come to you as Irfan, you know. He comes to you as a person who is full of uh, a doubt, who is full of mm -hmm. questions, who is at the same time immensely open to you, uh, to the script, to uh, the space where we are going to shoot the film. You know, mm -hmm. uh, let me give you an example. Yeah, uh, let's say we go to the desert of Jaisalmer to shoot the film. So. Uh, if Irfan arrives uh, a few days before the shoot, then he disappears. Where has he gone? He has gone into the desert. Why has he gone into the desert? 
because all the locations where we are going to shoot the film, he's going to go and spend hours there. <laughs> and I've seen Irfan, he, when we are shooting, he's never in the vanity van. You know, he's always outside there with you. Okay. So he will come, he will look at the space in which we are going to shoot. If there's a tree, he'll go and sit at the tree. If there's no tree, if there is, you know, open sky, and even if it is very, very hot, you'll see him sitting in the sand. You'll see him take, take off his shoes. You'll see his feet, you know, trying to understand the ground on which he is going to act. Uh, and by the time he comes into the shot, it is as though he belongs to that uh, terrain, you know. Mm -hmm. So here was an actor who had no limits about uh, what he could do. He always wanted to do more, you know. And if you have an actor of his stature who always wants to do more, then he encourages everybody ar around him also mm -hmm. to have the same ambition to do more. And as I said, he was never in the vanity well. He was there with you, you know. So you can encourage that uh, here he is. All right, let's do more. In fact, you've taken away my next question because I was going to ask you what impact does that have on co-actors? I mean, like, do they get awed because here is an actor? You, I think, wrote in your book also that uh, if Arne is rehearsing, even when he's not rehearsing really, you know, in his mind, he's always rehearsing. Yeah. Well, you know, there is a, let me say a few words about his relationship with his co-actors. Uh, mm -hmm. It is very beautiful. All right. Mm -hmm. He's one who, despite, you know, people look up to him, all these young actors, they really, really look up to him and they want him to give, the, give them some advice. Right? Mm -hmm. I have rarely seen uh, Irfan give any advice directly. All right. Mm -hmm. He finds his own way of telling the actor how they could improve themselves. For instance, let me give you one example. You know, uh, let's say there's an actor who uh, is wearing some kind of a kurta mm -hmm. right? uh, for the shot. And this actor is uh, uh, just acting and mm -hmm. is not paying any attention to what he or she is wearing. Okay. So he might say to the actor, you know, that uh, the color of your kurta is really lovely. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, if uh, you pull the collar a little higher, you know, mm -hmm. maybe the color will come out nicely. And when you turn your head, we will see mm -hmm. the color. What he's actually saying is something totally different. He's telling the actor, become aware that you're a body with this uh, color mm -hmm. on you. And that if you just move your head a little like this, you will bring another quality to your performance. So he finds his own language, his own gentle way of telling you how to become better. And I think all his co-actors, they, they really uh, cherish that, you know, because he doesn't make them feel less. He always makes them feel like we are colleagues together. Uh, is there any particular anecdote you remember uh, while making of the film which would uh, bring a smile to your face or and another if uh, that brings tears to your eyes? Uh, well, you know, now because everything is a memory now. Yeah. Mm. So in many ways, this memory is sacred and it is as memories are of uh, people that you love very much, uh, full of... Uh, Sadness, yeah. But Ifan was a man of joy, all right? He enjoyed every moment of life. I'll tell you something uh, which I haven't spoken about. It is there in my book, but I haven't really spoken about it. He and I, we could not find the answer uh, of doing one particular scene, you know? And we had worked the whole day trying to do the scene, but there was no breakthrough. So late in the evening, he said to me, you know, let's go on a ride in the desert in Jaisalmer. So I got into his car and we just drove around. And that was one thing that you could do with Irfan. You could sit for an hour with him and there was no need to talk. 
right. he would look somewhere and just his look would tell you you know uh, that he was sharing something with you okay and that was enough those were i think today if i think about it i, I forget everything that we did together i just think of those silent moments that mm. we spent together to me they are still the most cherished and beautiful of all my memories of him so here we were in the car traveling and it was getting late in the evening and we came to a tea store right um uh, we got out and we ordered some tea and we were sitting on a kind of small wall outside the tea shop and we saw a bullock and uh, a little calf come towards us and this bullock was really em emaciated a skeleton you know so what i did is i went inside the shop and i bought some biscuits and uh, i jumped down from the wall and i was feeding uh, the bullock these biscuits and it really ate them very hungrily and i tried to give a biscuit to the calf but then the bullock it uh, hit me with its uh, head very very hard mm -hmm. and uh, then it became very aggressive and irfan told me anu jump jump over you know but before i could jump over um, the bull was again hitting me so irfan jumped into on, onto the ground and he pushed the bullock uh, neck away from me and we could both jump back over the wall now i think anybody else would have been scared and you know angry and uh, disturbed uh, to be attacked like this by a bullock uh, irfan instead got another packet of biscuits mm -hmm. and standing of course safely behind the wall he well, spent al almost half an hour feeding the bullock mm -hmm. and speaking to it mm -hmm. you know saying uh, mr bullock mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> this is not a nice thing for you to do we are trying to feed you and you are attacking us i can see you are hungry tell me a little about yourself what is your name where are you coming from so just the quality of his voice you know and and him talking to the bullock really calmed uh, the bullock down all right and i think that tells you something very very important about yeah. ifa Yeah. that he would approach life with a gentleness but also with a great curiosity about others you know whether you are a human being or an animal but today do you miss if i am the person more or the actor more uh, to be honest both you know both as a person uh, you know the i think one of the great things that makes irfan what irfan is is that he was always always uh, putting into the front the idea of growth he always wanted to grow he never felt that you know he had become right. all right he never felt that okay now i'm irfan khan and that's enough you know he always wanted to find out what is this irfan khan maybe he can be a little something else and something else and something else and that is what he encouraged in others that never be satisfied with what you are you know because you have many more possibilities inside yourself open yourself to these possibilities so that was irfan as a friend you know and you cannot ask for a better friend who encourages you always to do more and to do better but it was the same friend who when he was acting brought this quality of creativity to you let's do more let's find out more let's uh, go beyond our limits you know so really you know uh, um, a friend and uh, a colleague an actor who always encourages you to go beyond your limits to go into the unknown and not to be scared to open yourself to possibilities i miss both dear fans 
Uh, you had discussed many other projects with him, and of course. Uh, <laughs> So I mean, have you have you found a replacement for him, and will it will it be possible for you to complete those projects without him now? Uh, well, uh, I've I, I've written I think uh, completed three scripts, which were mm -hmm. supposed to be with him, you know, but uh, after his passing away, I just put them uh, away in one corner, and uh, really I have no desire to do them with anybody else really you know really the light uh, the light is, yeah i think they were not they were but they are irfan's films you know mm -hmm. i wrote them with him in my mind and i'm sure that one day if the scripts are ever published whoever reads them will mm -hmm. actually be able to see irfan in them you know so at best we'll see them in a in in word form, but never on screen. Uh, yes, I don't think I can do them with anybody else. No. So going back to the so song of Scorpions, when it opened uh, at the festivals, of course it got uh, glowing reviews, but also some criticism. Uh, my question is, how do you handle uh, you know this criticism if it comes your way? But is it a learning well, process? I think criticism is, again, this is something that both Erfan and I uh, discussed a lot, you know, uh, that criticism is something that happens if it is good criticism, you know, if it's, re if it's really well thought out. All right? mm -hmm. It helps you to look at other possibilities in your film, you know, mm -hmm. and then it is a great learning process. You say, ah, okay, I made a mistake here. In my next film, I, it is something that I should keep in mind, you know. So I think, generally speaking, criticism is always uh, uh, always helps in one's growth, okay. And uh, especially if you have a good colleague next to you who can help you, you know, not uh, take it uh, darkly, you know, be bitter about it or, you know, get angry. And Irfan would never let you do that. And you would always feel his support. You know. Then uh, you take the criticism, as I think criticism is meant to be taken, uh, to help you do better in the future. But today, as Irfan is not there, uh, do you think an objective assessment of his film is possible? I mean, most people are likely to get emotional. Anyway, people are already very emotional. I can see the comments which are, you know, on the, for, for the trailer. Uh, they're running into thousands and uh, everybody is like emotional. So do you think that objective assessment or fair criticism of the film and his performance possible today or it, it will remain a tribute? I think everything takes time. The film to reach India has taken, you know, all these many years. And uh, I think perhaps this moment it is fair and right that people come and offer their love to Irfan, you know. And I think we will have a lot of more time in the future when they can then return to the film and see it a little more objectively, you know. But I think this is a time when let it be a homage, let it be a tribute. But, but are you aware that the film is uh, clashing with the magnum opus, Mani Ratnam's uh, PS2? And would that, um, affect, would that affect the film in any way? Uh, I think this is a question more for my distributors than for me, you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, mine is... is, is, uh, is uh, is, is uh, not a mainstream film the way uh, Mani Ratnam's films are, you know, and Mani Ratnam is such a huge, respected mm -hmm. uh, uh, filmmaker. So I think uh, perhaps, and I hope, that mm -hmm. people will watch both, you know, <laughs> that would be wonderful. <laughs> and if Mani Ratnam's films are houseful, then maybe they'll come and watch uh, The Song of Scorpions. Uh, though you already said it that an actor of uh, Irfan's caliber should be watched on the big screen, but do you think changing uh, or stays 
and the fact that very few are frequenting cinema halls these days uh, most big films are also flopping ott would have been a better route no no in fact uh, ott has been a possibility all these 6 years you know yeah. but uh, i have very supportive uh, producers and uh, i was very very keen that the film first be seen uh, on the big screen you know and then if it goes to ott i understand that it's part of business but uh, really really i hope uh, and i'm very happy that uh, the film is on the big screen we fought very hard to keep it like that we fought very hard to be patient you know and we took uh, my producers they they really suffered uh, quite a lot uh, over all these years but they stayed steady in their commitment to release the the film uh, on the big screen but apart from uh, irfan what else does the film offer why should the viewers uh, watch it strictly from the dramatic point of view the drama of it What I think it's a that's film that's uh, very, very much of uh, our time. You know, it's a film that talks about, uh, in simple terms. If let me just try and put this simply, uh, it talks about how we live in a world today. You know, that with almost every breath that we take, there is some pollution, there is some violence that we breathe in. You know. and what has often been the case is that when we breathe out we breathe out the same violence yeah. and what the film is saying is that uh, we cannot help what we breathe in but when we breathe out we can make a very critical choice do we want to breathe out the same poison that we have taken in or is it possible that we can breathe out a song you know so but 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 it is the song of the scorpion nevertheless <laughs> so that is what the film is saying it is going to encourage us to sing life you know to, to celebrate life. life to celebrate even life even if it This... offers up some toxicity yes they like a scorpion yes. or scorpion's poison yeah that that that's a very good thought But tell me, I mean, you live in Switzerland, so how do you remain in touch with your roots, especially your Punjabi roots, and and India at large? You know, does staying there uh, offer you, uh, you know, kind of a more objective point of view? You know, or uh, these are the circumstances of life. I don't think you know these are uh, absolute choices that one makes. You know, I was born uh, in Tanzania, in Africa. Yeah. and uh, uh, i was about 14 years old when we came to india yeah. and uh, i left india let's say at the age of 24 25 uh, and uh, moved to the uk you know um and then uh, for various reasons moved to switzerland all right but uh, this has also been because of where i was born and my family background etc etc okay uh but the thing with india is that uh, uh i studied at the film and television institute in pune yeah and i had wonderful teachers i had great great teachers you know like- and it- Uh, teachers, uh, uh, for example, the one unfortunately who had passed away, but whose presence was very, very strong uh, during my time at the Film Institute, was the great uh, Bengali filmmaker Ritwik uh, Ghatak. You know, and uh, Ritwik Ghatak has had a tremendous influence uh, on my uh, life as well as filmmaking, and then his students. Uh, Uh, Kumar Shahani, Manikal, they have been very, very important to me. They are my direct teachers, uh, and I worked with them. In fact, with Mani, I worked on two films. With Kumar, I worked, I think, on three films. And with them, they gave me, you know, a great gift. When we started doing the films that they were going to shoot, 
They told me, Anoop, you go and live in the uh, location where the film was going to be shot. You know, so that gave me a very, very close and direct uh, relationship with India. So India to me is not simply Mumbai, you know. <laughs> it is uh, the deep recesses of Himachal Pradesh. It is the deep desert of Rajasthan. It is Gwalior, you know. It is some places uh, in Chennai. It is some places in Kerala, you know. So that is how they helped to uh, make the country a part of my breathing. All right. So today I still carry the perfume of these so many places in India. And, and of course, whenever you come to shoot in India, that, that kind of reinvigorates all those memories as well. Absolutely, so what, of course. So what, now that you, you know, shelf three scripts, almost shelf three scripts, uh, what are you, what can we expect from you next? You know, after Irfan's passing away, I thought I could not shoot in India anymore. You know, I really did. I felt I did not have the strength to go back. Because if I shot anything, I would just miss him, uh, you know, in everything that I would do. So um, I actually decided to do a film in Africa, uh, you know, go back to the country where I was born. So that is what I'm working on. That is my new project, uh, to do a film in Africa. But more and more, uh, especially now that the Song of Scorpions is going to be released, I feel something uh, opening inside me. You know? And I feel like I can come back to India again. And, you know, there are such wonderful actors uh, uh, that I've worked with uh, already. So there is uh, something that I would like to do with Dilot Mashom, with mm -hmm. Rasika Dugal, with Tiska Chopra, with Shashank Arora. You know, yeah. all these wonderful, wonderful actors, and all of them are, many, many more. Yeah, of all course. of them are doing wonderful uh, job on OTT right now. All of them, actually. absolutely. Yeah, but, absolutely. But yes. What about Babel Khan? Would you ever think of working with Fan's son at some point? You know, I would never think of working with Babel because he reminds me of uh, Irfan. Mm. I would always think that I will one day work with him. Because suddenly one day he will do a gesture or he'll find an expression which has nothing to do with Irfan, you know. But that one gesture, that one expression I know would have made uh, Irfan very happy. So I'm waiting for that moment when uh, Babel will find that one gesture which is just him, you know. And it will make me look up to him and not look up to him because he's Irfan's uh, son. Uh, but but last time we spoke, you we also spoke about you uh, know Anand and Ma Matam, Anand or Matam, you know, which are two words that also appear in your book. But today, would you say there's more Anand and less Matam as compared to when you were writing the book and you know when we last spoke? Well, absolutely. It is, yes. There's more Anand because uh, I see Irfan everywhere now, you know. I see his great performances. And, um, of course, there is Anand because the film is being released and on the big screen. So, yes, Anand, he Anand. So, last question. You were talking of the influence of your, you know, uh, directors in your life, uh, makers. What, what would you say has been the lasting influence of Irfan in your life? I think the lasting influence of Irfan has been very simple. It is that uh, uh, you are never complete. Yeah. Yeah. You are always in journey. You are always yeah. traveling. And keep yourself open to that journey. And, the, and you are open now and also to the possibility of working with Babel someday, but open to the possibility of working on those three scripts as well? No. Or that's uh, a, no. that's... That is still no. 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 Yeah. That's still no. 
<laughs> right. Right. Uh, and looking forward to watching your movie. And thanks so much for your time. A pleasure talking to us always. Thank you so much. A pleasure talking to you. Thank you so very much. Bye. Bye Thank for you. now.